Hold on a second, guys. One moment. Let me just insert a funny intro here. Ah, there we go. One sec. Inserting funny intro right, right, right around there. There we go. There we go. Well, uh, my name is Michael. I am uh, 27 years old, and uh, I play Vermintide. <laughs> What is up guys, Party Knife here. Now as you probably all realized, today's video is all about having a big PP. Party pistol, that's right. Today is all about having a big party pistol. And that is exactly what Vermintide's equivalent of the Mandalorian, the Salt Spire Bounty Hunter, It's all about. All about that great big Huge PP or dual wheel PP. That's also that's also just fine. We're not judging here. No, today is gonna be all about the bounty Honda. Yes, yes. Now I have linked seven builds down in the description below, and they are all structured around his ranged weapon. Now the most fixed aspect of the bounty hunter is unlike the witch hunter captain and the salad in my opinion you universally get the rapier like the rapier is also best for the witch hunter captain but th there's plenty of other options for the witch hunter captain whereas on the bounty hunter like you can get accent falcon you can get the normal falcon you can also get the bill hook it's not that you can't get those things to work but you're gonna struggle on the higher difficulties especially on kata you need the rapier simply because the rapier is the only weapon that provides uh, sort of the, the combination of mobility with a 50% push slash push block attack cost, which just makes it way better defensively to stay alive. And you really need to, to sort of be able to create that space for yourself with the bounty hunter. It's all about proper movement because otherwise you can't get in that damage that you need to get in, right? And so essentially I've structured him into three different types of builds you got the brace of pistols build uh, the brace of pistols builds you got the crossbow builds and you got the repeater handgun builds and those are essentially the three primary like it's not that you can't use the volley crossbow but i think currently in the current meta um as much as i hate to say it i think it's underwhelming on the on the binary hunter compared to the three other options now if we're if we're being completely brutal about this and like just talk about what is objectively the best at the very high difficulties, it's actually the normal crossbow. Now, I hate to say that because it is also my least favorite of these three to use, um, but the fact is on the very high difficulties, uh, sort of the one-shot crossbow simply provides this uh, the, the best combination of precise range, one-shot uh, guaranteed kill, with uh, a fairly short reload time, uh, unlike the repeater. And so all around, it should be the best, at least on Kata Plus difficult. But personally, my favorite is the Brace of Pistols, followed very closely by the repeater, because the repeater is just so much fun to use. It is just hilarious, right? When you can just one-shot Chaos Warriors, even on Cataclysm difficulty. And so we have three, uh, I have three builds with uh, the repeater, one for Legend, two for Kata, and one for Legend and, and one for Kata for both the Brace of Pistols and for the Crossbow. Now, a quick uh, rebound of his uh, passives and talents here. He has 50% increased reload speed, 50% uh, extra ammo capacity, and a guaranteed range critical hit every 10 seconds, which also does trigger when you use the special attack on the Rapier, thus giving you Swiss Lane. And of course, he has his locked and loaded. Now, as for temporary HP, you were always gonna get melee kills because uh, blood from money is just way too inconsistent way too inconsistent and you don't really have anything to base it on with this hero like with shade for example you can sort of you can get it to work because you have that guaranteed critical uh, melee with your ulti but here there's just no universe in which you're not getting melee kills for temporary hp so that's pretty much fixed then you have the level 10 now unless you're doing a super off meta totally unviable but hilarious melee bounty hunter build just for the meme then you're never gonna get steel crescendo you're always gonna get either weight of fire 
or open wounds depending on your ranged weapon. As for the level 15, it's it's a mixture between assassin and enhanced power. Usually on legend, you you get assassin because you kind of want to have assassin if possible. But it's just that on Kata, to hit most of the significant breakpoints, you're going to need enhanced power to hit those. And so you get enhanced power on Kata, whereas you don't need it, uh, need enhanced power to hit those breakpoints on Legend. So quite often, you get Assassin on Legend. Level 20, you have a mixture uh, between three actually really good talents. Uh, it used to be Cruel Fortune, that was the go-to, but uh, that was before they introduced these new talents. At the moment, Blessed Combat is the most versatile and what you're going to be doing most of the time. But I have included a build with Prize Bounty as well. But I'm kind of split as to whether or not it's actually worth it anymore because of a thing that I'll get into momentarily. Level 25, the go-to standard is job all done. That's pretty much what you're going to be getting for all quick play runs because it's the safest option. It's not, again, rile, uh, rile the mob. If you're really good with your movement, run it if you feel comfortable. Um, salvaged ammunition, terrible talent. Currently, uh, the only build I would use this with, possibly, is for the crossbow build. As you can see, melee kills reload Victor's ranged weapon. Now, it used to be that if I had this talent and I was using the repeater crossbow, it used to be that I would do like this, right? And then I would kill this, and then my weapon would be fully reloaded. But as you can see, it only reloaded a single shot and not the full eight which is why it's terrible for anything except the volley crossbow currently. Um, so job well done. As for his ulti, you're always, just 100% of the time, again, unless it's not that, that I don't want to discourage you from trying the two other talents, but if we're talking viability, there's just no argument that double shot it isn't the absolute best. And although you most likely already know this, but just in case you didn't, the 40% that it's listed, uh, uh, which it will replenish is per bullet and because your ulti fires two bullets if you hit a perfect headshot it's going to replenish 80 percent of your ulti instantaneously right so boom now obviously that only works if the minion survives the first shot so the reason that i didn't actually get 80 uh, percent back there is because the chaos warrior died to the first bullet now another thing i want to mention regarding the uh, repeater pistol is that when you have the talent blessed combat you might logically assume you can see those stacks right? like what this talent does is essentially you get six stacks that you can then consume with range and as you consume them with range you gain melee stacks and so it goes back and forth right so it essentially rewards you for constantly switching between melee and range combat but here's the thing using a fully charged attack here with you know, that shoots eight pellets, only replenishes, uh, only uh, consumes a single one of those charges, right? It only counts as a single shot. So there's definitely extra value to be had there, so that's really, really good to know. Also, if you haven't watched my ranged mastery mechanics video, I, uh, um, there's a more detailed explanation of this concept here, but it's really important if you're using pretty much any ranged weapon other than the bracer pistols, then it's really important that you know this mechanic uh, where you're essentially forcing, you're using R right after you take a shot to force the reload mechanic faster, like to cancel the animation and thus reload quicker. So if I'm just not touching my reload and just, you know, as fast as possible, that's how quick it's gonna, you know, reload and shoot. So notice that speed. And if I use the R mechanic, There's a significant difference. Um, and it's the same with the crossbow here. If I'm not if I'm not doing anything, but simply just spamming. Oops. And if I'm using R. Now, if what I'm doing doesn't make sense to you, then uh, watch my ranged master and mechanics video. Um, I think it's the best way to be consistent about this mechanic is to double tap R right after you take a shot. So you take a shot, then you double tap R. That's how I've been, been most consistent with it personally. So uh, that's also really important to know. 
Uh, of course, it's also important to know a couple of things about the ranged weapons. The crossbow has a 10% increased critical hit chance on zoomed attacks, which means if you have scrounger on, you're adding 10% on top of your base 5, your weapon 5, and if you're playing on kata, your trinket 5, right? Giving you a 25% critical hit chance on top of the guaranteed critical hit chance, uh, the guaranteed critical hit. Now, uh, a big misconception about a hero like a bounty hunter is that critical hit chance is important. Depending on the weapon. I do use it on bracer pistols, for example. Um, but really, it's way more important on the other weapons to deal the necessary damage. Because you have a guaranteed critical hit, because you have this mechanic that essentially gives you a 100% guaranteed critical hit, you don't need critical hit chance. If anything, you have way less need for it. Your primary need for critical hit chance is just to proc your Swiss sling. Um, and even then, you don't actually need that because you can just proc it like that. Um, so, so critical hits are... I wouldn't say overrated, but it's not as necessary as you might think. So when you're playing with the legend builds, and you have to pick between stamina recovery and critical hit chance, get stamina recovery. It is way better. So otherwise you're going to find yourself having a really hard time surviving. Let's put it that way. Now with those things set, we have uh, the Brace of Pistols Legend, which is just the, you know, curse resistant stamina recovery, attack speed scaven, because you don't need that much to hit all the significant breakpoints, Crit chain scaven again because it's legend. You don't need it to hit all the significant breakpoints. Scrounger so that you constantly replenish your ammunition. Way to fire because you get that passive for for having high ammo capacity. Assassin because you don't need assass uh, enhanced power to hit most of the significant breakpoints. You have blessed combat which is going to give you that extra 15% power. You have job well done, which means you should you should really try to actually in the beginning of a match as the bounty hunter. It's okay to farm green circles in a sense not you, you know not to farm green circles but because you need those um, you you might as well get that 30 percent damage reduction as quickly as possible so it's okay early on to simply last hit every single elite that you possibly can especially with the brace of pistols it's just such a great weapon for uh, for last hitting stuff and so really quickly you can build up that 30 percent damage reduction combined with your uh, your bark skin and you're gonna have a decent chance, like a decent amount of survivability, right? It's pretty much the same for Legend, except you get the enhanced power and you swap up the Cursed Resistance for, uh, for Crit Chains and Stamina Recovery. Other than that, I have kept it the same. You can also put Infantry or Armored on the Brace of Pistols, uh, on the brace of pistols to hit certain, um, certain one two-shot breakpoints, I believe, on things like the Storm Ramen, but I don't generally find it necessary personally at least but i guess that's a matter of preference there you, you know you, there's a bunch of crit, uh, breakpoints that you can't that, that you can hit when you combine the effects of blessed combat and enhanced power and so on and so forth but i don't feel like all of them are necessary to hit um, and of course on the kata again it's just the same swap out i prefer using shrapnel um, on the bounty hunter it's one of the few heroes where i like to use shrapnel Especially on the Brace of Pistols build, because then when you throw a bomb into a Storm Remnant Patrol, for example, and they have that shrapnel, and then you can just blast them down so easily. Uh, Chaos to hit some s specific breakpoints. Then we have the One Shot Wonder on Legend. Again, same concept uh, with Assassin, Blessed Combat, job well done. You could also get Prize Bounty here, but again, I don't feel like it's worth it anymore because Blessed Combat is just so good. Now, I have made one cata build where I use Price Bounty. Now, the thing about using Price Bounty um, that used to be so great with, uh, with the Bounty Hunter is that essentially you get a double shot, right? But if you notice the time between those two attacks and then the time between these two attacks, almost insignificant. Like, if you're using the R mechanic, then it's barely even faster to have it preloaded. And I just don't feel like that's worth it compared to the blessed combat. Simply because the blessed, like if all the charges were consumed in a single shot, then maybe. But because you have all six charges and a single shot here only consuming a single charge, I think that, uh, yeah, that's, that's the better build in my opinion. But I've left it in there nonetheless as a build with price bounty. And, uh, and yeah, 
with this build on Kata, you do need to sacrifice a lot here. Uh, power versus Chaos, crit power, power versus Chaos, crit power, and Hunter with enhanced power and blessed combat. And when you combine all of those factors, then you can indeed, on Cataclysm difficulty, take out a, a Chaos Warrior. Oh, oh, that was a Chaos Zombie. I just crashed the game. You're gonna have to take my word for it. With that build on Cataclysm difficulty, you can, in fact, one-shot <laughs> a Chaos Warrior if you get a proper headshot with the critical hit passive. And with that said, let's move on to some gameplay. So here we got the uh, quick play Cataclysm Engines of War game with, uh, with randoms. Now, I see I screwed my UI up. Also, I accidentally uh, forgot to record the first 30 seconds of the match. I hope you can, uh, <laughs> you can forgive me for that. You'll probably survive. Morning. Don't know what the Cooper Bot was doing right there. Now, the great thing about this build in particular, the, with the Bracer Pistols, is that you have a, an effective dodge count of 100, aka infinite and 25% increased touch distance. So it is the single most mobile ranged weapon in the game. And on top of that, you have the ability to do these incremental reloads over time, which allows you to sort of sort of put in bullets here and there in between the gaps. And that's just extremely useful. On top of that, and one of the reasons you will see me sometimes do what looks like wasting ammo, but really, it's just when your passive is off cooldown, your critical hit passive that you can see at the center of the screen. Um, even if there's no value to be gained from killing an enemy minion with ranged, every time it's off cooldown, you might as well take a shot at an enemy minion. Because assuming you hit the enemy minion, you spend one shot, but you obtain two. So you essentially just gain an extra shot every time you do that. Which is why you'll see me sort of waste shot here and there. Add an arbitrary minion. Unfortunately, we didn't get any. That's uh, good. Unfortunately, we didn't get any boss spawns. We did get a troll, but we didn't get any boss spawns this uh, this game. So I'm not able to show you how to properly sort of position yourself in order to uh, optimize your chances of actually using his ulti using his ulti to guarantee a head oh, guarantee and guarantee right uh, there's no such thing but to optimize your chances of actually getting a double headshot and they're almost resetting the cooldown of your ultimate again you don't want to be too like like some some people care too much about getting the headshot like sometimes you just need to use the use your ulti get the value and be done with it right but of course when there's a boss it's really like it's definitely worth it versus a boss to try very carefully to place yourself for the first shot such that you get get that perfect headshot this way looks promising double loot die yay Welcome as the bounce of the swagger dagger squad. That's mine hard. Thanks for the subscription, my friend. <laughs> I love having that all when I'm recording videos. Anyways, <laughs> where was I? Oh yeah, I was in dialogue with the, these teammates on on VC, so uh, to tell them that I was gonna move into this area here. Otherwise, you want to be very careful with moving too far away from your team as the bounty hunter. Because you very quickly get overwhelmed. And you ha essentially you have no mechanism other than pure movement. Blocking and pushing for getting like, getting out of uh, a tricky situation. So in that sense, you are absolutely relying on your team. And in terms of your team role, assuming it wasn't obvious, um, you're a ranged DPS. And your primary focus is specials. That should always be your primary focus. Obviously, elites are secondary. And you, of course, want to take them out as effectively as possible as well. But specials should always come first. Which is also why the, the crossbow is technically better. Because it's better at picking out individual specials. But the Bracer Pistols are just so much more fun. 
let's be honest. Let's be real here. <laughs> They're just so much more fun. Their, their, their play style is just so much more satisfying in my opinion. Then is I have nothing against the crossbow, it's just that face of his just <laughs> It's just so satisfying, yeah. I, no other way to put it. Gunslinging. In a situation like that, I could have been more careful to go with the headshot, but really there was no need to. Like, in, in that situation, once you have a special that's actually shooting at you and about to deal damage, just take it out. And one thing I also didn't mention is that whenever you want to sure that you're gonna get a headshot with your uh, your ulti, or even just that you're, you want to be certain that you're actually gonna hit the target, and it's, uh, like, at a fair distance, then holding down F... For a little while, just allowing the full animation to come out before uh, before actually releasing and taking the shot, it's gonna increase your accuracy. You sort of see on the crosshair when you're holding it in that it sort of gets smaller and smaller until you have the the maximum precision. So now I'm not gonna lie, I was not entirely proud of my ultis uh, versus this particular horde. <laughs> I'm about to pop my Kong pot. I decided, screw this this patrol. Like, at first, I was like, let's just avoid the patrol. And, like everyone was able to avoid it, like that we could just not aggro it. Then I thought, ah, you know what? It's just gonna attack us at a later point, and it's gonna be even more annoying and even worse. So, uh, carefully waited for the assassin first, take that out, so we didn't have to fight both the patrol and two assassins first. That's when things can get tricky in the chaos. So I failed that first. I mean, I did get two kills, but I failed the headshot, right? <laughs> Which, uh, you know, not optimal. Two more, but failed the headshot again. Two more, but failed the headshot again. And again, it's not that important. Again, two more, but no headshot, right? And getting two per ulti there was the most important bit. But still, I was a bit sad that I didn't get a single one. Single headshot. Not gonna lie. And again, because you have no mechanic for getting out of a tricky situation, in a, in a scenario like this, this is really where you you have to emphasize good positioning first and killing stuff later. Because again, if you get trapped, then you have nothing, right? Then you have nothing. You're gonna get stuck and you have no mechanism for getting away. So here I decided to just drink my pot because I knew there was a fixed health pot up here. Once I was full health here, I just slowly took out the remaining trash minions here and then I, the plan was to regroup with my team, but they were, uh, they seemed to be good and actually came to me instead. Also a priority here to get ammunition. Ah, this is so stupid. I'm about to get hit by a heavy there. Like, the amount... I was not prepared for just how much that Chaos uh, Mauler moved forward. Thankfully, there was plenty of healing here. Well, that was obviously a mistake on my part. Now, there's very often ammunition here. It's not a fixed spawn, but I, I have... I don't know if I'm, I'm delusional here, but I feel like the spawn over behind the, the log over there just so often either an ammo crate or just a loose ammunition. I have need of you yet, Forward a bit because not much That's happens me. here while uh, we discuss whether or not we should get the Grim. Now, this is the sort of event where the bounty hunter does not shine. Let's be real. This is a situation where you're gonna be surrounded by trash minions while moving a barrel. This is this is literally everything you can't do with a bounty hunter. 
the bounty hunter's worst nightmare, pretty much. Right, because there's no single target that you can just burst down. Stuff is continuously spawning from all sides. You have no mobility ability. You can take out specials and try to survive, and that's about it. So that's what you should try to focus on doing. I end up dying at this event. My only death in the game is going to be uh, it's going to be as part of this event. It's understandable. This is a situation where a um, huntsman, a ranger huntsman, would have a huge advantage over a bounty hunter, simply because of his invisibility. He has, he just has more survivability because of it. So this is where sort of it's in situations like this that your bounty hunter really gets tested to uh, to the limit, right? If you don't have really good teamwork. So that's obviously the second thing that comes into play here is good teamwork. Because again, it's only an issue if you don't have teamwork. But you know, you're never going to have perfect teamwork and it only takes missing one person and then you have a second person who, you know, gets trapped maybe. And before you know it, you're on your own, right? And again, I decided we weren't really making any progress, so I took a risky play here. That was not intentional, but once I had actually hit them, I thought, eh, might as well use it. Now this is fair momentarily. Yeah, there. When I got trapped. I should have seen that Storm Remnant hit coming, though. Actually, very nearly dropped the game here. Like, I very nearly. Thankfully, uh. Thankfully, both the, uh. The Grail Knight and the Battle Wizard managed to get it done. Now, I, I, th I don't think this was intentional, but it actually wasn't a bad idea for the Battle Wizard to go the opposite direction. That dragged all of the attention away uh, and gave way more space for the Grail Knight to rest people. Now, I don't think it was intentional. If it was, props. But uh, regardless, it had the desired effect and, and we could all get rest. And again, I think that's what quite often gets lost in events like this is the fact that just get one guy to the spot where you can revive people and reset the round. Like as soon as people start dying, as soon as more than one person is dead, that should be your focus, right? Unless you're, you know, you can clutch it, it's John, Handmaiden, something like that, and you're really experienced, right? But other than that, then you should always focus on pressing people. Now I'm not gonna lie, it is hard in a situation like this to contribute as a bounty hunter under these specific circumstances. And you should really just play it safe and stay alive here. But I did feel comfortable enough to go up here and help the handman a little bit with the barrel. how I'm, I'm sort of whenever all my ammo is used it's it's imperative that you get at least one reload in right you can really you you can you can reload two to four bullets ammunition in like the tiniest of gaps in between fighting minions it, it really only takes a tiny gap to put in two uh, two minions uh, two bullets especially because of the mobility of the weapon so you swap to the weapon and you do a dodge whilst you're, uh, you're, you're putting in those bullets. Because you preferably never want to be at zero ammunition. Because essentially that's that's all you value, right? Um, your primary job is to take out specials. And you always want to have those two bullets for an assassin jumping or a strangler spawning or whatever, right? So it's imperative that you, that you balance your mobility... With your reloading and your weapon, your, your bullet consumption. It's also, it's a resource. But I think with the bounty hunter, it's okay to waste ammunition with the Bracer Pistol. In the sense, when I say waste, I mean 
it's okay to spend it frugalously. Um, because you can't. Because it allows you to kill stuff quickly. And because you have a mechanism for, for sort of making, you know, making it last, right? I mean, I, I, you should never just do the thing where you're literally just 12 bullets, looking one direction, and just dropping the whole clip. That's almost never the right thing, even if there's like, it, very, very rare occasions, but almost never. It's almost always better to do two to four uh, shot bursts. Where you pick a target, kill it, pick a target, kill it, pick a target, kill it. That's almost always better. Boom. Of course, be aware of your passive. Try to keep a, a mental tap always. Is this a shot that, that has the critical hit? Because then you most likely only need that one shot. At most, one more. You want two or three specials? Taking out specials is what you do. What you do best. But make no mistake, it's 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 not easy unless you got that uh, got that movement down to uh, down to a, a, a science. Um, if your movement is bad and your positioning is bad, then you're gonna find yourself constantly lacking the space that you need in order to actually take out the specials that you want to take out. So sometimes you'll see me pulling out my pistols in the middle of a horde, for example, and taking shots. And that's not something I would recommend unless you feel comfortable with them, like mechanically comfortable enough to do that. It, that's something you learn over again hundreds of uh, hundreds if not thousands of hours you learn to recognize those small gaps here and there that most other people probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't use and for good reason right because you it's really some tiny gaps here and there right um, but watch out it's okay to you know live on the edge so that was really just <laughs> that was a bad ulti I went straight into <laughs> Straight into the lock. Bruh, the fucking gas. <laughs> and of course, especially when you have the room like here, where it's obvious that there's nothing to worry about. You definitely want to keep a mental tap and not just, you know, waste this gap, right? Always reload your weapon gap like this. Constantly reloading, right? As soon as I've taken a couple of shots, if possible, I want to be at max ammo all the time, until the moment comes when I'm when I'm forced to use all of it due to the amount of specials, elites, whatever it might be that are around us, right? But whenever whenever there's the room to do so, I will spend two to four shots, then I will reload two to four shots, and if I use any more, like here for example. But then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start reloading right after. This is neither the work of Ratman or Muteded Northlander. It is something else. So ammo, ammo, ammo management is extremely important for Bracer Pistols in particular. I heard, I heard the gas rat, but didn't really uh, get a shot on him, on him up there. A bit of a lucky dodge, not gonna lie. Some people like to. Concoction on Bounty Hunter. 
and I wouldn't say that it. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm not a fan of concoction on the bounty hunter. On paper, it's, it sounds good because oh, you get both the strength part, get the uh, pull and regeneration to get the ult in. But I always feel like what happens with concoction, especially on a hero like the bounty hunter, is you force your shot because of the tiny time window in which you actually that you actually have to nail the shot. And I feel like what quite often happens then is that you simply fail to get the headshot. So I feel like Decanter is better for or proxy for several different reasons. One being that I do like to have some amount of clutch possibility, even on the bounty hunter. And a speed pot is one of the things that can provide that. Also a strength pot, just having those 15 seconds of strength uh, or of, of extra power and armor uh, penetration with your general ranged attacks is just wonderful. And of course you have <laughs> your ultimate, which you can, uh, assuming you get headshots, fire off a lot of times, assuming you nail every headshot. Now, of course, a situation like this is where he gets tricky, right? You're, you're literally one attack, or I am right now, one attack away from death. Have a Tome and a Grim, so there's no healing. There's no nothing. There's essentially nothing to prevent me from dying here. If I get one mistake, and, and dead. And so in a situation like this, you really just want to be meticulous about how you're fighting hordes in particular. Because it's, it's 9 out of 10 times it's going to be that horde shot in your back that's going to screw you over, right? So again, if you don't feel comfortable taking out your pistols and shooting a leech in a situation like that, then just don't. Just don't. Um, just dodge it. Keep fighting, generate some temporary HP, and wait for a better and more opportune moment. And in a situation like here, I'm constantly push block attacking. I'm all too aware of just how you know how little it takes when you're fighting, uh, especially when you're fighting shielded trash minions, because you just you don't have a lot of punching power on a bounty hunter with a rapier. You just don't, like not with your melee. And so you really need to respect, especially on Kata, you really need to respect infantry minions and recognize that that's just not what your hero is gonna, uh, gonna clear effectively. And so you're always gonna fight them as safely as possible, at least if you've taken damage, if you're not full HP, right? You don't have to care as much when you have room to spare. Uh, It's gonna blow. Gas left dead. Oh. Again, there I picked the get. Like I could have farmed more green circles by hitting the chaos warrior, but we're not gonna struggle to kill the chaos warrior. The gas rat was more of a threat there, so the the, the gas rat was more important. That simple. too aware of just how quickly one of those berserkers could end my life. Seem to recall me doing an absolutely horrific ultimate momentarily. Yeah, I can take out that assassin, no problem. I got that shot with the jump. Oops. Thankfully I did manage to dodge. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been an awkward moment of me losing the Grim, most likely. I 
give him that chance. Have no teammates near. He spot that goddamn slave. Now I completely overlooked on the ammo crate downstairs. Which I also believe is a fake spawn, actually. I don't know why. I feel like when I was playing it, I had forgotten all about that ammo crate. I believe that is a fake spawn, actually. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but there's an ammo crate inside the house. I'm pretty sure it's a fake spawn. For whatever reason, I've forgotten all about it. Don't remember if I mentioned it in uh, my tactical map guide. If I didn't, then... Uh, Momentarily. Minions are essentially finding that, oh shit, I have no ammo. And then the battle was like, hey, there's ammo here. Ammo here, come, come. Very risky played of me. Managed to get him up, thankfully. Oops. That was also very risky again. That bomb could have easily taken out, taken myself out, if I uh, hadn't hit in the right position. Playing on the bounty hunter, I played it as safe as I possibly could. Which you should. Now, when I arrived over here, I realized and I told that to the battle wizard, oh shit, we, ca we can't both go for that res. I would have literally killed, possibly killed both the battle wizard and the handmaiden if I had continued down that path. It's like we'd have water on one side and an army of minions enclosed from all sides on the other. And here again, I chose to divert to the opposite side unless I saw the minions, because I didn't know how many more minions were going to jump up. And again, as the bounty hunter, I don't really have a mechanism for clearing them out. So, better safe than sorry in a situation like that. Again, the bounty hunter is very much a case of knowing how to play safely is how you play aggressively. You can't play this hero aggressively if you don't know how to play him safely. I mean, you can, but then you're just gonna die and get, you know, <laughs> then you're definitely not gonna get those green circles. So, um, a successful bounty hunter, it's all about knowing that you're weak. Knowing that you're extremely weak when it comes to your melee combat. And so you need to, to create room, you need to utilize the gaps that you're given to regenerate your ammo, replenish your ammo, Reload your pistols, take as many shots as possible, get as much value out of it as possible. Don't feel free to just throw out your ulti whenever you feel like there's a, a special there that it's in the distance, it's it's semi difficult to take out. Use it. You don't have to go for a perfect double headshot uh, ulti every single time. Not necessary. It was a decent game. A lot of specials killed, that's what you want to focus, a lot of elites killed, that's your secondary focus. Anyways guys, that's all I had for uh, Vermintide's Mandalorian Master. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I should start here uh, at the end that I would mention two things. First of all, I'm going to do a, a community poll regarding which class we're going to do next. And secondly, I just thought I'd mention real quick that I try to put in a lot of builds in these guys now, and I try to distinguish as best as I can between 
the build I, I prefer to use, the build that's objectively considered to be the current meta, the best build in the current meta. But then I also try to include a build that I just think is fun, that's also viable. Because I want to make one thing very clear. The, these are not set in stone. Like, if there's a particular way you like to play, a particular talent that you like to use that you want to include in any one of these builds, then feel free to do so. Like, it's about having fun. And usually when you're having fun, you're playing the game better, mechanically, when you're enjoying yourself. So don't feel, feel like these are, like, locked in stone and that you can't change a single thing as long as you keep the important things in mind, such as will my talent change affect my breakpoints? And if so, how can I account for that? Things like that. Um, at least that's, that's the rational thing to do, in my opinion. Um, but, but don't feel, feel like you can't put your own twist on any one of them, because you totally can. Again, assuming we're talking normal quick play on any difficulty, then most weapons can be made viable in some sense. But obviously there are certain builds that are just structured better and thus are more viable, uh, because they hit better breakpoints and so on and so forth, right? Just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, in case any of you had misunderstood it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.